Hey girl, welcome to Finding My Best Self, the podcast where it's totally okay to show up in your leggings and messy bun, because let's be real, that's our uniform here. The only rule is to be unapologetically yourself. And I'm Mandy, and joining me is Pam, the queen of finding the silver linings. We're here to share laughs, tears, and everything in between. Think of us as your new best friends with some stories to tell and wisdom to share. From face palms to victories, we're diving into the journey of self-discovery, wellness, and what it means to truly embrace who you are. So whether you're conquering the world or just trying to find your phone in the black hole, I mean purse, we've got you covered. Because here it's all about encouraging you to lace up those sneakers or don't, we're not judging. And join us as we explore what it truly means to own your confidence and find your best self. So pour yourself a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Finding My Best Self. Today I have with me myself and Mandy and Allison and I should have asked you how to pronounce your last name before we got on because I will totally screw it up. So I will let Allison say her last name for you guys, but Allison is a wife and a mama and she wears so many hats. So I told her that too. I was like, I typically would go down the whole list, but I will probably (laughs) say a lot of those names wrong too. And there's a lot of them. So I'm going to let Allison tell you guys about herself. Um, So Allison, just a little bit about who you are, what you do, your husband, your children. Sure. So last name is Koznov. I'm Allison Koznov from Homa, Louisiana, and I live in Thibodeau, and I am married. Um, can't Don't ask me how many years, because I can't count in my head. <laughs> We've been together since 2007, married in 14. Um, I have a seven-year-old, and I have a two-year-old, and life is just wild. For my um, trade, I am a registered dietitian. Um, I'm also an online health and fitness coach, at my full-time job at Mary Bird Perkins, I'm an oncology certified dietitian. So I work with cancer patients throughout their treatment journey and after as well. So we also have survivorship clinic where we work with them after they're done with treatment to help them get to their best self once they're done. Um, other credentialing that I do have is an integrative and functional nutritionist. Um, that is my most recent credentialing um, along with a certified leap therapist where I work with food sensitivities and helping patients figure out specifically what they are sensitive to, removing it from their diet and following the LEAP protocol so that they feel better immediately. That's so much. I know. That's so amazing. (laughs) Like, Oh, and I have my online, my own personal online private practice. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. (laughs) I do that on the weekends. I'm that like, awesome. I'm, I'm like trying to keep up with you saying them all. And I'm all I can think while you're saying all this is how do you even keep up with life? Or I, I mean, I know what it's like trying to keep up with one full time job and now starting MBS Fitco on the podcast. So I'm like, I don't know how you keep up with all of that. <laughs> you wake up before everybody else wakes up and you go to bed when everybody else kind of has been asleep. <laughs> it's yeah, just long, that's- longer days and time management, I guess. Mm-hmm. That goes into that. what we were talking about before on the podcast. And I find that that's like a, a trend that we are, we're seeing is waking up before mm-hmm. everyone else. Like that's mm-hmm. whenever you have to get that time you in for to. yourself. Yeah. Yes. I've been getting up at four since I started with Beachbody um, 10 years ago. And it used to be just self-development. And now it's just transitioned to working and doing my clients um, educations and sessions preparing. So it's just a transition. I've been a 4 am for a long time now. So now it's just a habit. It's not a chore anymore. <laughs> now, when you say that, so is that when also you work out or are you working out in the afternoon? I do. I work out. So I get up at four. That's when my alarm goes off. I kind of piddle around, get up about 4.10. Um, I have a second alarm at 4.10 to make sure I'm out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I start with my pre-workout um, and I start working and then around five o'clock I go do my workout. I work out from about five to five forty-five. I get ready for myself after that. And then at six 30, my alarm goes off and I'm getting my kids up and getting out the door for seven fifteen. Yep. No yeah, time for error. That's how it's done. That, <laughs> how it's done. <laughs> no time for that. error. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. That's, that's exactly my morning. Like if I don't have, like you said, 10 alarms set for different <laughs> things, like I'm at, 
because I mean, I get it because you're in the middle of your work or you're in the middle of your mm-hmm. workout and yeah. you get to the time that you're going to have to get ready. And it's like, oh, I can't push getting ready because then I have to get the kids ready. And so yep. it does. Yep. It has to be structured in order to fit it all in. But, Absolutely. Well, going back to your work, is there anything specific career wise that drove you to wanting to do each of them? Like I know that it started with oncology But what has kind of been the progression to get all of these certifications? So starting, I guess, starting with my clinical career, I started in the wellness field when I got my registered dietitian. When I became a registered dietitian, I started in the wellness field. Um, And then from that job, I was actually not even in the dietetics field for a while. I couldn't find a job locally. So I was doing um, more retail and then got a job at a local hospital and have kind of just transitioned from that within the clinical field. I started as an inpatient dietitian and was kind of nicely forced into the oncology world. And the certification on that end was merely for self-development and education because I had no knowledge. I was brand new in my internship. We didn't have any education on oncology nutrition. And I know it sounds crazy. I had no idea that was a thing. So when they told me that's what I was going to do, and I'm like, okay, well, you got to tell me what I need to do because I don't know. Right. So that that certification was more started along the lines of I'm going to order this book. I'm going to study so I know how to help my patients. I need to know what I can do to make them better and do my job to the best of my abilities rather than just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and, okay, well, this is what I was told. Mm-hmm. So I guess this is what you need to do. So it was more just kind of on my end. And then I've been an oncology certified dietitian for about four years. And as of last October with my private practice, really got into the integrative and functional nutrition aspect because I wanted to look at the body as a whole. I didn't want to just look at food. I wanted to look at how stress plays into it, hormone management, kind of just all the factors that the body goes through. It's not just nutrition. It's major. It's a big part of it. But what else can we do to compound the health aspect of nutrition and your whole body? Yeah. That's crazy. So I'm going to share something and only because I know that I can because she told me it's okay. Um, Because I know that you can't speak about your patients. But I talked with Brandy. And Brandy, if anyone listened to the podcast episode, the interview that we did with Brandy Verda, you actually helped her at some point uh, yeah. because Brady is. I didn't know that. Cancer. How cool. Yes, I That's know. Whole so circle, I, like, everybody's connected. I know. I, I was texting with her the other day, just giving her, we actually got some more pictures in. So I was like, we got more pictures, go check them out. And then she gave me some feedback from her doctor that she recently got. And I told her, for whatever reason, the podcast got brought up and I was like, we have someone coming on who's, at, you know, does oncology or whatever. And she was like, oh my gosh, is it Allison? Please tell me it's Allison. <laughs> she was so excited. She was like, if it's not, I'll be excited no matter what, but please tell me it's Allison. So she clearly loves you so much oh, and that you've helped her in her journey. Um, so I wanted to tell you That's that. all that I wanted to do when I started. And same with my practice outside is, so when I'm in the cancer center, there's that aspect, but there's so much more help to be had outside of that. And as a dietitian, it's scary to do it on your own. So if you're not in an outpatient facility, a clinic, it's just, I feel like it's such a under pushed opportunity for health because a lot of our health crisis starts with exercise, movement, nutrition, food choices. And we live in South Louisiana. Everything is comfort food, good food, fatty food. So it's to just, my, my reason was to just have an opportunity for someone. If they needed me, I was there and it's kind of just exploded, which I'm super thrilled about. And then where the future holds, I'm not sure, but it's just, it's been a whirlwind and an exciting one for sure. Yeah. You mentioned nutrition and hormones. And so Mandy and I recently had a conversation about this. This was just a personal (laughs) conversation her and I were having about how eye-opening it was for us whenever we found out about the correlation between what we eat during different times of our cycle in the month mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how much it can help how you feel just because, you know, us women, we have at different points in our cycle, yeah. you know, with the hormone levels fluctuating, yeah. that there's actually protocol for the different yeah. types of foods that you can eat to help you to feel better and not have those, you know, yeah. those waves and those ups and downs during the month as 
much. Isn't it incredible? So that was, <laughs> that's crazy to me. I wish I would have knew about that a long time ago because it would it would have helped a lot of a lot of months of just struggling and pain and but it is even the workouts, you know, tailoring your workouts for that certain time too. So yeah, it's yeah. definitely intriguing. And that's, and that's why yeah. another reason why I wanted to have you on here, because not only, you know, back in our beach body days, <laughs> we, uh, you know, just connected on health and fitness and all of that, but just, it's really inspiring to see what you have done and what it's, it's taking you to and open in that conversation that I, I think need, like you said, there's so much to be had. So yeah. Yeah. So I know you said that you don't have necessarily any sort of pivotal moment um, mm -hmm. in your life, but is there maybe anything that you're, that you've maybe dealt with just recently personally, that's kind of, I guess, in your career or in your personal life? Personal life always. <laughs> and then career wise was starting this. So just kind of backstory. I dive everything head first. I'm just like, a, I'm going to figure it out later. Mandy can attest to this. Uh, <laughs> when I started Beachbody, didn't second guess it. I thought it would be cool to be on TV. I was never on TV, but it was still cool. <laughs> Mandy got the TV time. I did not. <laughs> and then like with this side, I was call it a gig, but career, someone, a friend, another dietitian said, Hey, you want to do this at the same time? It would be cool, you know, like to help people. And I'm like, sure. So, you know, I didn't even ask questions, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> um, and then my husband has been ill uh, on and off for about five or six years. So that's kind of been hard. Um, I'm kind of the go to work mom. And then I come home and he's there helping with the kids. So it's a little different life than I expected. You know, when you think about when you started the marriage with two working individuals, that's kind of what you anticipate and you don't expect at mm -hmm. what for I'm 35 now. So 30 that your life is going to be turned upside down and you're a, not a one income household, but a one working parent household. It's, it's different and it's difficult, but you adapt and uh, I didn't even tell him that I was <laughs> starting this. I didn't tell him that I was starting the new education that I was doing. I just, I'm focused on improving me so that I can improve us as a family and as a, and a couple as well um, in the future. So that's kind of where my, I guess my grind and hustle comes from is how can I make us in the, the best position for all the opportunities that may come, you know? I love yes. that. I want to like scream, preach, <laughs> like really loud because yeah. yes, because that's something that we, that we talk about so much of a few things, right? It's just the taking care of you. First of all, first and foremost is I'm going to do the things that I know that I need to do, whether it is physically in my career, you know, mentally, whatever those things that it is that you need to do to make you your best self, because when you do, then everything else follows. You yeah. have a better marriage. You're a better mom to your kids. You're a better, better, you know, daughter, sister, whatever the case may be. So all of those things, it plays such a big factor. And then just the, like you said, you just go for it. So when an opportunity presents itself, there's no, don't overthink it. And that's exactly. something that I can't preach to people enough. It's just not to overthink it, not to try and talk yourself out of it. Don't do, don't play the what if game. You know, yeah. what if, what if it doesn't go right? What if I fail? What if, what if, what if it's yeah. just, just go for it. And so, like you said, you just don't even think about it. Just, yeah, sure. Okay. Let's go. Maybe let's think a this. little bit, but not, don't, don't just not dive in freely. <laughs> not too much. Not too much. One thing that I've yeah. always told people, you know, when I first thought about doing MBS, because Manny and I laugh, like her and I are very much like that too. Just like you is that, you know, we think of something and we're like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna do this. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna do oh, something else comes up. Oh, great. Let's do that too. And then, you know, and then sometimes we're like, oh, maybe that I shouldn't have done that. So let's, you know, try something else. But so this time around, I did take a little bit of time to think about it. Not a whole lot. It was like two weeks. But what I tell people is that when you can't stop thinking about it, exactly. when it stays on your mind, then you need to do it. It's meant to be. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Well, and I think that too, because, you know, just, I mean, going back to everything that you've talked about is if you th overthink it too much, kind of like that situation that you had, that you almost talk yourself out of it. 
And so it, mm-hmm. it's, it seems to be just, you know, looking back on years of, of doing it over and over is even when the times that it may not have worked out like you want it, something came out of it, right? So like something, either a relationship, a friendship, or some type of situation where you had to learn in that situation has always prepared you for like the next thing. And so I can honestly say that about you, Allison, because even going back to like, I keep going back to Beachbody because that's just, you know, yeah, <laughs> I knew where you we were. That, but, you know, like I, I got to know you even more then. And I feel like everything that you did there, you have brought into what you're doing now, you know, just helping people, even creating things, you know, all the all the graphics and everything we had to do back then, like all of that has, has, you know, it's helped With now. Our feet and set so, out. <laughs> gosh, I sent her a picture the other day and it was a graphic that I made a long time ago. I don't even know what it was on. And my feet were cut off and I'm like, and like bl- oh, come blatantly so cut out. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you, you live and you learn and you figure it out, but oh gosh, that's horrible. But I do know that, That that even even that experience and everything going back to helping people then has even for me and Pam helped us to do this now. So everything Mm kind of leads to the next thing, whether it it worked out the way that we wanted or it didn't. It's prepared us for the next thing in life. So it's it's pretty neat to see it play out that way. Well, yeah. And just because you wanted X to happen doesn't mean that Y and Z isn't better. You know, it doesn't have to be how you wanted it. It can just be a different path. Right. Well, I know we talked a little bit about time management, but whenever it comes to, I guess, let's, let's go back to like mom life. Right. So I know that you're working, you're, you're doing different things. Do you have kind of a routine in the afternoon as far as like family time or time management in that sense? Cause I know that that's what I struggle with, right? Like we're constantly, we're at work, we come home, we have other things to do business wise. And so how do you carve out a time for like family time in a sense? Yeah. So my schedules on the weekend are two slots per day and the rest are for my family and for my exercise because I do run on the weekends too. So it's a little bit longer Um, during the week when I get home. I really don't start opening a computer, emails, anything until Catherine goes to bed at about 730, eight o'clock. So just trying to find the time and then making the, the most of it, trying to stay present as and it's challenging because you want to answer mm-hmm. the email. You want to answer the text yeah. because there's always that urgency there, but it can wait. Yeah. I know yeah. we've talked about that. <laughs> oh yeah. This episode is brought to you by MBS Fitco. Excitement is in the air at MBS Fitco as we prepare for our upcoming launch. We're introducing a line of premium activewear designed to seamlessly fit into both your workout routines and daily life. Our versatile collection is perfect for your workouts and equally suited for your day-to-day tasks, ensuring you look and feel your best, no matter the occasion. It's not just clothing. It's a commitment to self-care and embracing your best self. Be the first to experience the fusion of style, comfort, and functionality. Subscribe to our VIP list and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for insider information and exclusive perks available only on our launch day. Dive into the show notes for all the links you need. MBS Fitco is more than just activewear. It's a lifestyle. Join our community and be part of our exciting journey from day one to celebrate fitness, self-care, and your hero within. Don't just wear it, live it. All right, now let's dive back into this episode. Well, okay, so you said two things. You said that you carve out time for your children and your family and that you carve out time for you. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to say it again. I'm going to, I sound, I know I sound so repetitive, but it is carving out time for everyone. And it's almost mm-hmm. like a time blocking thing. And I know this sounds crazy and I know it sounds like, is that really what life has come to, right? Is that we have to like time block, but when you're busy and everyone has in this day and age, everyone has so much going on, right? Everybody is so busy, whether it is between, again, their family at home or their careers or the birthday parties and the bridal showers and everything. There's always so much going on. You know, someone wants you to go hang out here and there. And it's so how do you make sure that you are still having that one-on-one family time and how you are still going to make sure that you have your me time? And it's putting those first and you have those times 
scheduled in. Like that is, you know, so it's just as hard as it is to say no to responding to the emails and stuff like that. It's also saying no to people when they're like, oh, well, you know, there's this party or there's this party or, hey, let's hang out. It's well, no, that is this time or sure we can come, but we won't be there until this time, you know, and it's not just because if not, then you're, you're giving your life away to whoever else. Right. And I think that that's, what's most important. And what you said is that you it's carving out that time and making sure that you follow that and as much as you possibly can. So that's really important. Okay. So let's talk about nutrition because that is a lot of what you do, right? A lot. Right. The majority of what you do falls back on nutrition. So, and a lot of what we talk about on here is just physical fitness and being active and stuff. So I want to, I want you to really talk about the, the correlation between nutrition and fitness. Cause I know how I see it and how I preach it and how you know, that as much as physical fitness is important, nutrition is really important. Yeah. And so in your professional opinion, because you're the professional, I say (laughs) it and I'm just, you know, oh, you just, you just work out. You're just beach body girl. So, you know, you you can't out exercise a bad diet. So you have to make them pair. You have to marry them. Um, And I'm not saying that you can't have a good bowl of gumbo, you know, it's all about balance and it is about movement too, but purposeful movement. So I love to tell my patients that just because you walked up the stairs to go fold your clothes, doesn't mean that that's your exercise. Like I I need you to get your heart rate up. And if that's what gets your heart rate up, we'll work on getting it a little better, but we need purposeful exercise. And specifically as we age, we lose muscle mass females Mm -hmm. in general, body composition is the bigger topic than just weight management. And it's under, under conversated piece. Um, it's, uh, not talked about enough as far as your body composition, how much muscle you have compared to how much body fat to your fluid, you can weigh the same. So Mandy and I can weigh the same, but we can have completely different body compositions and we can be completely different in health aspects. If she has, low skeletal muscle mass, high body fat. She's clearly not in a healthier state than someone that is a good quality muscle mass with a a moderate to lower body fat. So when we're looking at just food, nutrition, physical activity, movement, your body as a female, it all plays together, but it's so hard for females in general, males as well, but more females because we're so hard on ourselves. We're so critical. We want to look this way. And then when we don't, we, we just self-sabotage and sometimes, you know? Yeah, we know all too well, (laughs) but we do. It's true though. Yeah. I honestly think that that's something that we've also talked about just, you know, going back to that time where we were super, more super critical of ourselves. And that's something that we're trying to bring awareness to also is that, you know, what happened five, 10 years ago is not going to be the same case. Now your body, like you said, your body composition or just how your body runs something that you did then is just, it's not the right course of action for you now to get the results that we ultimately want to see. Yeah. I know I've dealt with that a lot recently um, because I am very young to be going through this, but I'm actually going through perimenopause right now. So my diet and nutrition has totally changed on me because of that. Like my hormones are not the same. And because of that, like my diet has to be different. It's crazy because I noticed that the way that I used to eat when, let me go back, let me step back before I say that. So you said that about the, the, body weight about how two people can be the exact same weight, exact same height, exact same everything and and have different body composition. So I have, and I've kept all of these pictures over the years. I have side by side pictures of me when I was at my absolute best as far as body fat percentage goes. And I think I would think I was right around 147 pounds at that time. My body fat percentage was down to, it was like 15%. But I also, and I was in a size two at the time. But I also have pictures of me at 147 pounds and I have no idea what my body fat percentage was, but I was wearing somewhere between a size, I was wearing a size eight in clothes at the time. So it's crazy to yep. see and to understand that when it's, you know, your, your body fat percentage, your muscle mass, all of that makes such a big difference. 
and I look so different in those two pictures side by side. Physically, you can look at me and see how different I look. And you feel but, different as well. Oh, God, yes. You feel the difference. Absolutely. Yeah. And so what I was going to say, so going back into how, you know, my diet at that time when I was eating and cutting fat and working out the way that it was, I have attempted to try to eat like that now. And my body is like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> And, and it's all just because my hormones are so different. And, and so I've learned that I have to eat a different way now to, you know, to maintain where I'm at because I can't eat that way anymore. So it's the nutrition side is just, it's so, it's so intense and it's so unique, but I, you know, I do, I see people a lot that are like, you know, I work out and I work out and I work out and I'm, you know, I'm not losing weight. And I'm like, well, what are you eating? <laughs> You know, because it's yeah. the nutrition is first and foremost, yeah. like it's, it's really an 80, 20, in yeah. my opinion, like it is so much more the food that you're eating than the workouts that you're doing. And also you the know? quantity, I feel like kind of since I've gotten into this side business, the volume of food and calories that people are eating is so marginal compared to their needs. So we all have an estimated nutrition needs based on your body composition your weight, your height, your age, your gender, you have an estimated needs. And just we have to eat enough to even be able to lose the weight and the body fat. And then just it's mm -hmm. eye opening to see that when people go on diets, they restrict so much. And like you're saying, they they work out, they work out, they burn all the calories, but they're not fueling, they're not giving their body even the half the nourishment that they need to meet that goal. So how is your body going to keep running, keep kind of mastering everything it has to do if you're not fueling it, you know? Yeah. So polar opposite too, right? So a lot of people immediately think like, you know, oh, I'm eating too much. That's why I'm not mm -hmm. losing. Whereas some people, it might be the complete opposite, opposite. is that you're not eating enough yeah. Um, yeah. in order to lose the weight. And again, that is what I started to notice is at that time when I was younger, when I was 10 years younger and able to cut fat and all of that stuff is I was able to work out and eat this many calories and I was cutting fat and, and all like gaining all this muscle and stuff. And I couldn't do that now because yeah. my body will not like I require a little bit more calories and a, a different type of calories in order for my body to cut. And it's been a struggle, right? Because after years of me doing that, and I kept and I'm like, I'm eating the right things. I'm doing what I was doing before. And it's not working. Why is this not what is wrong? And it was because I wasn't taking in enough calories. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. eating enough. I was really and truthfully, I was starving myself. Starvation. Absolutely. You know, and it, and just not knowing. And I thought I was like, I'm doing what I was doing before. And so as our bodies, as women, as we change hormones change and we get older, a lot of things change. And it took a lot of understanding for me to, you know, and it's not talked about enough. It's like you said, it's not talked about enough that for people yeah. to know and understand this, that, you know, that your body's change and also just metabolism in general slows down as we yep. age too. Mm-hmm. On top of that so it's fun it's fun being a female <laughs> well, and that's literally the conversations we've had we're like man at some point it just seems like it it goes downhill but it really doesn't it's just you have to change up and it's be open-minded to doing something else that you you wouldn't have thought to do you know like I've tried I mean everything under the sun I think at this point and going back to you just doing the food sensitivities a couple of years ago, I did one of the tests for food sensitivities and I was curious, you know, I was eating the rice, the chicken, the broccoli, all these things. And I was breaking out in rashes and bloated and just feeling disgusting, really. And come to find out I had a very high food sensitivity to broccoli. And so anytime I eat broccoli, like I, I have the same reactions and it was the healthy food, right? It's like, how is the healthy food making me feel like garbage right now? And it's because of the sensitivity. So yeah, yep. leave it to Mandy. Mandy made me laugh. I want to be like, <laughs> we're all doomed. We're all doomed. <laughs> downhill. It's all well, downhill. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm bringing 40 right now. So, you know, it's good times. <laughs> That's why I said like this perimenopause thing. I'm like, what the heck is this? What is going on with my body? I don't like it. Make it stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then somebody commented on some uh, posted a picture of me working out last night or whatever. They were like, you look like you're 25. And I'm like, yes, getting <laughs> younger. I don't, my body's not telling me that. But if I look that way, then great. <laughs> that works. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
Well, if we had to switch gears and talking about just doubt and uncertainty, whether it's your professional life or your home life, like, is there any kind of like doubt or uncertainty that has kind of like stopped you from doing things? I mean, I know you go full in and go full force, but you know, I feel like we always have those kind of like self doubt moments sure. where it's like, okay, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? So what would that have been for you? Yeah. I mean, I'd say yes and no. Like I, I mean, same as beach body, we're going to keep going back there, but you know, when you do so well and you get so amped about something, you want to know how you can do more. And there's only so mm-hmm. many hours in a day. So like I work nine, well, eight thirty to four. No, I'm sorry. I work eight to five. <laughs> I don't even know my hours at this point. Um, and then you come home and then you find time to do the other things. But like, what if things could be different, but the doubt creeps in? Well, this is a great job. This is a stable job. What would life look like elsewhere? Mm-hmm. You know, not job, but maybe do what I'm doing on the side full time. But it, it's always terrifying. Always. I can't jump full in on everything, right? Have to have some doubt in some here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we can. It's. Just, I think it's just, I don't know. And I feel like that that goes back to just that personal development that you take time to do. Because if we're constantly in our head telling us, you know, oh, well, it didn't work out before. So who's to say this is going to work out? Like, am I wasting my time putting my energy into something? But a lot of that gets validated whenever you you feel you know that sense of purpose and things are going the way that they should be going then it's kind of like you have to reassure yourself like I am on the right path you know doing whatever I need to do yeah that's where uh, for me that's where a lot of the journaling comes in or just the the little bit of time that I take to just sit alone in my thoughts it helps with that a lot but for me personally that's that's where I'm able to work through those thoughts because they pop up so much for me. They do personally. Yeah. So what is one piece of advice? If of all the advice that you can give with all the hats that you wear, what's the one piece of advice that you give our listeners based on something that you've learned in life? Go for the biggest and the the hardest dream because every step along the way is going to get you a little bit closer to something even if it's not where the dream is, it's it's things along the way and that's your ideal dream. So everything will fall into place. Don't change gears. Don't give up. Just keep going no matter how long it's going to take you. But you'll be happy if you keep going. Yeah. I just don't that. stop. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop. Cause I because do, it, I feel like we're, we stop ourselves like mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like we said, just to, I guess, kind of recap what was said earlier it's not to stop because even if it's not, like you said, even if it's not the dream that you're going for, even if it's something what you would consider, even if it's a lesson, even if it's a lesson that comes out of it, it's still for the greater good. And that's the, the biggest thing for me is always letting people know that even when it seems like it's not good or even when it seems like it's bad, the lesson, the lessons are blessings because it's something that you can learn and grow from that it will eventually lead you to whatever the next thing is. And then you'll be like, well, I already know that not to do whatever from, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever happened before. So even, even the bad is always, it's always, always a good. So if you wanted our listeners to take away one thing, and I know we talked earlier about running. So I, I don't know, I don't necessarily know if we want to talk about running, but I did want to kind (laughs) of add that in that you are an avid runner and you talked about you know, I, I guess that, that was my question too. Like as far as taking away, you always have done hard things and you've all, I say it's hard because, you know, I'm not a runner, but <laughs> just in general, like you've always put your best foot forward and tried something new and everything. So if you had to give one piece of information just for the listeners to take away, whether it's nutrition, fitness, you know, self-improvement, what would that be? First of all, I'm not an avid runner. I just like you to are. run. I am you not are an avid runner. <laughs> avid. I run for the peace and the sanity of the crazy. It's fine. <laughs> Is it every day? I, uh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely oh, not. Okay. <laughs> He's not avid. You can take that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm kind of going to fall back on that last one. It's just set the goals that you want, whether it is in fitness and your 
in just your day-to-day life, in your self-development, your self-improvement, but you need the goals. If we don't set them, we'll never reach them. So Mm -hmm. setting the goals. And like we said, even if it's not where we, where we're going to be or where we thought we'd be, you're still closer to, but if we talk ourselves out of it, you've at least started some of it because you thought through it, but we need to start with setting the goals because I feel like women in general, we're more hesitant because we think of everybody else first, right? So we need to set our goals so that we can even get the first foot forward. Because if we don't set them, they're just getting pushed back and back. And then you're going to look back and say, oh, I wish I had done that. And you don't want that. You want to get what you want, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So our famous question that we like to ask and how we end all of our episodes what does finding my best self, the woman beyond the cape, mean to you? Oh, okay. So beyond the cape, in my eyes, is the the human that we are. So finding your inner peace, time, tranquility, just putting the cape aside and finding your best you can make you or help you become a better mom with the cape or a woman with the cape. You can't be your best self if you're not giving everything back. You can't, again, same as the empty cup. You cannot keep filling from an empty cup. You have to keep rejuvenating. You make sure you're happy, you're healthy, you're in your good frame of mind so that you can be a good mom, a good wife, teacher, dietitian. We'll throw that out there. Runner, all of it. You just, it, it has to start within. I love that. A hundred percent. I know. I love that is that. it. And it goes back to everything else that we've talked about. Like it just, it all comes back to us. And if we're not doing the things that, that fuel us, then we can't be our best self for, for us or anyone else. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Allison, so much for coming yes. and sitting with us today and talking. If you're listening and this episode resonated with you, like, uh, like the, like it. Like social media, TikTok, like, comment, <laughs> like, and subscribe. <laughs> leave, us, leave us a review, share this episode with a friend. We're looking to expand our podcast out to more audience and help other women around the world. And, you know, just to, to get it out there. So like I said, if it resonated with you, share it with someone and we will be back soon. Um, our next episode will be Mandy and I, we have a duo episode that we've recorded for you guys. And last but not least, you are strong, you are capable, and you are worthy. We love you, and we're endlessly rooting for you. We'll catch y'all next time. Well, that's a wrap on today's episode of Finding My Best Self. It's been real. It's been fun. We hope you found a piece of your story in ours and feel a little more inspired to chase after your best self. And don't forget to share this episode with someone who needs a little boost today or a good laugh. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. Nothing says owning your confidence like a new outfit from MBS Fitco. Check out the show notes for the link to shop our luxury athleisure. Go ahead, girl. Treat yourself. And if you've got a story to share or a topic you're dying for us to cover, drop us a line. Our email is in the show notes. Just reach out and let's keep the conversation going. So until next time, keep owning your confidence, embracing the chaos, and remember, the best version of you is just an episode away. And again, we love you and we're endlessly rooting for you.